I'm here at the Sarsfields Community Centre in the small hamlet of Derry Trasna in County Armagh, where we have witnessed dramatic scenes this morning which will send shockwaves through this small rural area, through the wider community and indeed through the GAA. At around 11.15 this morning, this building behind me was raided and a number of suspects taken away for police questioning. It is believed that a committee meeting of the Sarsfields GFC was taking place at the time. Amongst those arrested were leading figures in local GAA circles, including former club and county players, club officials, leading members of the business community and also a prominent local politician who was earmarked as a future leader of his party. As part of our new series, 24 Hours in the Clink, we will have unprecedented access to police teams and also to a drone eye in the sky. It is believed that arrests came as a result of information received from two suspects who were arrested close to these premises earlier this morning after an armed robbery. It is hoped that we will shortly be able to bring you the names of those arrested, but also the names of people lifted around the country and at local business premises. As part of our new series, I also attended the Recce Barracks when the two robbery suspects were brought in for police questioning. So we are now at the Recce Police Barracks here on the Charlestown Road where I'm joined with Detective Stevenson. Detective, what will be happening at this location? Well, we're just about to interview the suspects. You can bring your cameras into the interview, but I must warn you there are parts you may have to edit out before it goes on air. You know, certain sensitive parts. Right, it's my turn to be bad cop. You were a bad cop last time. Was not! Was so! Was not! Was so! Right, there's only one way to sort this out. Right, okay. okay. Ready? Rock! Rock! Paper! paper. Suck! Ah, you always win! For the benefit of the tape, those here present, Detective Brenton Stevenson of the Racky Barracks, Detective Jim O'Hagan of Lurgan CID, and robbery suspect Eamon McGeown. Eamon, you're trying to tell us that you and Sean robbed this shop of your own benefit. Now, you were caught red-handed at this. You're trying to tell us that this was all for your own benefit. Well, we don't believe you. I ain't no doubt. I'm saying nothing. Eamon, we to tell you something. Detective Stevenson's been doing a lot of background work into this case. We believe there are a lot more sinister people behind this. A lot more sinister people than you. People who are doing this for their own personal and, we believe, political gains. You have a match this afternoon, Eamon, don't you? The Derby against the Tones, The yeah. Derby against the Tones. You don't want to miss that one, you don't. No. Eamon, it's like this, mate. You tell us what we need to know, we'll have you out for half time. I'm not saying nothing. Eamon, we can do this the easy way, will you tell us what we want to know? Or, we can do it the hard way. We have special ways of doing things up in the Racky Barracks. Detective O'Hagan's now going to leave the room, and I'll come back and have a little chat with you. Mr. McAlinden, your little friend Eamon has been very useful to us in there. He's in there singing like a canary. Well, actually, he's more squealing like a wee girl. Detective Stevenson, I have to say, he has some very unorthodox but very effective methods of getting information out of people. I would suggest you tell me what we need to know before Detective Stevenson comes back in here. See, what we need, Sean, we need you to fill in the blanks. We have your phone record, Sean. We know that you got a phone call. We know that you got a phone call telling you that Joe Carvel was going to leave around £4,000 in that shop for safekeeping. 
Who made the phone call, Sean? We know it wasn't Eamon. Who made the phone call? I would suggest you tell me oh. what we need to know. Detective Stevenson will be finished interviewing Eamon in about five minutes. And I would suggest that you tell me what we need to know before he gets in here. Who made the phone call? Okay. Oh, oh, oh I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. It was Maria Breen. Maria Breen told me. Maria Breen? Sean, that doesn't make any sense. Why would Maria Breen want her own shop robbed? Insurance. So it's an insurance scam. Maria knew the four thousand pound and the takings. The insurance was going to cover it all. They weren't going to lose out. Sourcefields. We were to get three thousand for the club. Maria was to take the other thousand plus the insurance for the takings. That was for the Lourdes Fund. The Lourdes. The Lourdes Fund. I don't believe these people out here. That is unreal. Tell me about the councillor. The councillor? Huh? The councillor? How do you know about the councillor? Let's just say I have my ways. You don't need to worry about the councillor anymore. He can't get to you now. He's on his way to the Crumlin Road Jail along with the rest of his gang. So you may as well tell us everything right from the start, exactly what happened. And don't worry, the councillor can't get to you now. Okay, look, here's the way it is. When Declan came onto the committee, full of enthusiasm, Looking to bring the club forward, all these good ideas. Next thing, chairman. The power went to his head. It was an ego trip. We were, we were pawns in his quest. He just wanted everything and he used us to get what he, his ways. We, 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 we were bullied, didn't it? There's nothing we can do. He, he kept the pressure on. He kept the pressure on. Right lads, that's the plan to new build. We need to get our fingers out here and get this new chain rooms finished, started and completed. Right? I don't care how we do it, we need it done. You don't care how we raise the money like? It doesn't matter how we raise the money. Sean, did you not hear what I said? I don't care how you raise it, what way you raise it, we need money to get this built. It's not going to build itself. I don't care how you do it. I'm the chairman of this club. There's an election coming up. I want to get this finished and away. My next move is Stormont. Move over to Lower Scali. Then I got the phone call from Maria. Joe Carvel was lost in the 4,000. We got the, right, we'll come, we'll get the 4,000. You know, the price was on us. We, we were told we had to get the money. You know, we were getting it. And we thought this, you know, next thing ended up in the shop of Bally Glavon, Robin, Robin Green shop, like, you know, I don't know, that's, that's just the way it happened, you know, we didn't plan it like that, it just happened, we were forced into it. Well, Joe, all right? Hi, yeah, Jared, how's it going? All right, mate. Well, that's how are you? Yeah, man, what are you doing with a load of shit like that? Night in Dark, yeah. You should be with a bit more fruit the way you played last Sunday, so you couldn't move and eat that crap. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, here, another thing. How's things going anyway? It's been uh -huh. Johnny's, Johnny's the good, like he's working the ways hard, you Good's know. Stuff. So, but remember that always thing about the fundraising? Uh, a bit of money for the club, but the new change, yeah. Well, how are you getting on with that? Ah, uh, not too bad, mate. We Sean there, I've had a couple of ideas when I was so. Well, you should have got on with it. Yeah, well, I'm going to get on with it. Yeah, well, you know, I'm going to get on with it. Yeah, well, you know, I'm going to get on with it. Yeah, well, you know, I'm going to get on with it. Yeah, well, you know, I'm going to get on with it. Yeah, well, you know, I'm going to get on with it. Yeah, well, you know, I'm going to get on with it. Yeah, well, you know, I'm going to get on with it. Yeah, well, you know, I'm going to get on with it. Yeah, well, you know, I'm going to get on Get stuck in there and get the money raised and we'll get this thing finished. Right? I know, I know. Right here. I have a council meeting in 20 minutes. I'll catch you later oh, on. Lord, all right, all the best. See you later. Right, Brad. Right, Brad. Right, 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 all the best. Right, right. Well, Eamon, what's the crack? Brad, what's the crack? Your Daclan was doing my head in. Uh, hey, no, hey, Dar Daclan. Uh, what are you talking about? It's money. Money? Sure. It's all going to work out in the end. Don't worry about the money, Eamon. The uh, money will be sorted. They would need to. They would need to. Hey, no, hey, Dar Daclan. Hi, Joe. All right, sir. Not too bad. Good job. Oh, head on, head on. Here last night. Not a trap. Not a trap. Joe Saturday night, no, no drink. Yeah. Change man, that's great. Man, boy. Pioneer. Not yet. Eh? Not yet. <laughs> 85.30, Joe. You put that in the bag for me, Jerry? Well, Joe, but you've got 300 pounds now. Do you owe me? Oh, well, here, don't you worry about money now. Nah. I sold five of them halfers there yesterday. Four grand. Cash money. Pound notes the way we like it. Yes. 
So, Eddie, come up the mower and square you up for whatever you have to get. Not a problem, Joe, I'll do that. Yeah. Tell me this, you wouldn't have a safe about here. I don't want to believe in that sort of money lying about the house all the time. No, I've got the safe made there for you. No problem. Just, no, Joe. Just, just a Monday morning? Monday morning, aye. What That'd time do you want me to come and see you? What suits you? Nine o'clock or so? Nine o'clock suits me. Grand job, Jared. Good Thank morning, you, Joe. Sir. Thanks, Joe. All, all, the Joe. all the best, hey, Joe. Later, Joe. All the best, bye. Hello, Liam. All right, Jared. That's a car for you. Oh, very little, very little. Right, Eamon, you know what we have to do here now? Aye, we do. This is the easiest bit of money we'll ever left, Sean. Did you get the piece? I did. I did. Fuck, Eamon, that's a child's toy. I thought you were a seaweed collie. I know, but he's not involved anymore, Sean. This is the best I could do at short notice. Sure, what would Jared know? We'll just put it in his face. Easy. It's about to walk, Eamon. It's about to walk. It's half past nine. Where's that joke you have man? Relax, on? relax. He'll be here, he'll be here. <laughs> Here. Never Shit. fucking mind. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> Where'd you get them? Out of the rice basket this morning. Get them on. <laughs> get them on. That's Ian McGill. He's a sorry feet captain. Oh, he's so lovely. I'm gonna ask him for his autograph. How do you know it's human? Sure, he's got a mask on. Oh, really, blonde? Who's stupid enough to wear the number nine? Right enough. And they're gonna rob the shop. Ah, oh, Jesus, that's nice cure, Eamon. Eamon? Hey, not Eamon. This is a robbery. Hands up! Hands up! Don't shoot Eamon. Don't shoot Eamon. When Eamon shoots, he usually misses anyway. Get the money in the bag. Money in the bag now. Just have a bag. Just have a bag. Where's the bag, Eamon? I never thought of bringing a bag. 10p for a bag. 10p for oh, a bag. Sean, I don't have. Sorry, Sean, I don't have 10p. There's 10p. Put the money in the bag. Come on. Hurry up. Hurry up. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Don't mess the boot. We can work, come on! Come on, Sean, hey, go! Hi, Eamon! Oh, oh. Red, 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 phone the place, quick, quick, right, quick, quick, pull you up! Right, right. But first, let me take a selfie. Never made a selfie! I'm on it, well, Jerry. Oh, Joe, look at you and me. Yeah. Joe, what's going to happen? Uh, one thing, Joe. I got mine, Joe. I kept one. Oh, I've kept one, but you have not. <laughs> Joe, hey, Joe. <laughs> Nothing I can do about it. All the best. Clothing one in dark clothing. The one on the left hand side, guys. Dog man, that's your man. That's your man, dog man. <laughs> They've run it. Two have run off to the backs of gardens. Off to your right hand side. Officer, run to your right. Run to your right there. <laughs> Okay, you're under arrest for armed robbery. Do you not have to say anything? But I must caution you that if you do not mention my question, something which you later rely on in court, it may harm your defence. If you do say anything, it may be getting up. You have to say. No. Laurie, Laurie, take that pot. What are you doing? Just taking the pot. I reckon that's the quickest I've moved all year, Laurie. Eamon, you're still not quicker than Weasel. Tom, why did you run here? Was this not a very obvious place to run to, to the, to the Sarsfields Club? See, there's a match on, so if we would have filtered into the crowd with loads of alibis, oh, I, I seen him, he was at the match, you know. Yeah. That's, that's how, and now here we are, that's, that's where we've ended up. Okay, right, fair enough. I've got, I've got the gist of the story now, Sean. Yeah. We know who's yeah. behind it. Yeah. Dramatic scenes there, indeed. 
I will shortly be interviewing Detective Stevenson who led this investigation, but now I am in a position to name those arrested in what has become known as the Trasnagate scandal. All of those arrested, it has become evident, have close links to one man in particular, the ringleader of what has been seen as a very well organised and meticulous operation to swell the coffers of the Sarsfields Club and to increase the political and public profile of the club chairman, Declan, the councillor McAlinden. All of those detained with the councillor are, of course, club secretary Sean McAlinden, senior player Eamon McGeown, both for armed robbery along with Mairead Breen for conspiracy to commit insurance fraud, and a number of others have been arrested for attempting to extort money out of local businesses for use by the Gaelic club. They include former senior players Kieran the Juice McAlinden of Creative Juices and Martin McAlinden, branch manager of City Electrical Factors. Former club player and senior county manager Brian McAlinden of BMAC Kitchens, who managed the 1990 championship winning side before taking Armagh to back to back Ulster titles. Car salesman David Crawford, who has never won anything. Former senior players and championship winning brothers Desmond and Eugene Skelton, along with Ronan Quinn of Ardmac in Dublin, and former PRO Jared Smith, those four collectively known as the High Moss Four. The very crafty Sinead McMahon, who is heavily involved in ladies' Gaelic football. Ironically, three of those arrested are closely linked to Detective Stevenson, who leads this investigation. They are his brothers, Kevin and Dennis. Kevin is a current committee member and former player, and Dennis, of course, was in the 1977 Armagh team and the 1990 championship winning side at this club. Most shockingly of all, perhaps, is that Detective Stevenson's son, Brian, who is believed to be the propaganda manager for the councillor and is also the club PRO, was detained. In a separate club incident, the club's vice chairman, Paddy O'Hagan, was arrested for robbing every other club in the county in his capacity as an umpire at games. The club has said through a spokesman that if they would keep Eamon McGone in jail and please release Paddy O'Hagan, we would probably win the league because Paddy is worth about four points a game to us Eamon McGeown is not. I'm joined now by the man leading this investigation, that is Detective Brendan Stevenson. Detective Stevenson, you certainly have been very swift through this investigation. Can you tell me what methods you have used to achieve such swift results? Well, let's say I have my ways. But I have to run now, I'm sorry, I have to bring these prisoners to the Crumlin Road Jail. Well, there we'll leave it. It certainly has been a very dramatic day here in Derry Trasna. Of course, all of those arrested must be presumed innocent until they are proven guilty. It is understood that a judge has set the bail at around £2,000 per inmate. Joining you from Derry Trasna, Conor Craney for RTE News. <laughs>